Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time this is for you, I'm Cyclone. Welcome to more or less play Train Simulator Classic. After looking at the scenario list, I found that there was uh, two additional missing scenarios that I did notice were missing on this list. I kind of referred to them yes on the previous uh, video. I was going to say yesterday, but this video is a little late, unfortunately. So we're going to do Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm hoping this week. Try and do that. But for right now, uh, I'll talk about that later. For right now, I am looking at the scenario tab here. I did notice that the uh, two scenarios are missing and they are indeed on the standard tab. I'm not going to show you right now. The lengths of the scenarios are 60 and 100 minutes. If I can, I'll try to run the 60 minute one for uh, the next video, which I'm going to try to do tomorrow. I'm, getting, I'm putting this video out on Tuesday instead of Saturday. I'm going to try to give you a Wednesday one this week to make up for that if possible. Ice3M is going to be storming into Munich. I don't like this a dark and stormy night. Uh, but unfortunately, the pub crawl is uh, also a one third is also a twelve thirty in the morning scenario, and if we don't do either of those, all the routes are going to be Munich into Augsburg and no variety, absolutely no variety. So, gotta do something, and uh, we're gonna get to see if the uh, route looks okay at night. Uh, my odds are saying my odds on favorite bet is no, it's gonna be dark and you won't be able to see anything. But let's see just how bad this sucker can be. So as you can see, guys, I'm starting this one in the editor. The reason for this is I've now tried the start of the scenario, the first minute of the scenario, five or six times, and this scenario is literally a pile of beep. And I mean that in every sense of the word. Beep. So, um, and I'm also trying to keep my videos PG-13, which is why I do that. So uh, we're going to go to the scenario timetable. We're going to show you exactly what's going on. We're starting at the northern end of the route. Way up here at the terminus that goes towards uh, Oberhausen. Oberhausen. So we're at the one station. We're starting in the uh, area right here. We're starting right here at uh, whatever you call this station. Augsburg HBF. Yeah, Augsburg HBF Glay. Augsburg HBF Glay. Excellent. So we're starting at Augsburg HBF Glay. We're going to continue over into this station right here, which is one away. Augsburg Hunstetterstrasse. I'm not going to say that again. Ah, uh, good luck with that. We're going to then continue on the journey. We're going to take the turn. We're going to follow the Munich Augsburg route all the way to Munich with a stop right here at Munich Pacing. And then we're going to continue into Augsburg, and that's going to be the end of that journey right there. The problem with this is, and I'm going to zoom back out to show you uh, on the player train here. So let's zoom in on the player train. The problem is, that's good enough, the problem is that we go to the player train and we're going to see what the timing is. So the scenario starts... At uh, 8.30, I believe exactly. Or maybe 8... Am I on the right train? No, I'm looking at the wrong train. Where's the player train? There I am. So we start at 8.30. We have to arrive by 8.31. If we're not there by 8.31, we are late. This cannot be done. I'm just going to say right now, this cannot be done. So as you can imagine, I am editing the heck out of this timetable. Because this timetable is impossible. In fact, I'm even seeing errors with static constant clashes here which I did not expect to see. So let's get rid of that. And um, yeah, so we have the various stops all the way. Now, not all of these are timetabled. Actually, actually, they are all timetabled. We'll ignore that detail. But there's a flag, uh, flag right here that is not timetabled. Of course, the final stop is not timetabled. So uh, everything else is timetabled. Let's go into one at a time here. We're going to try to, I'm trying to try to remember how to edit this. I think there it is. So uh, I'm going to change this to a 2. I'm literally going to change this to a 2. I've already cloned the scenario, by the way, because I've already proven this is impossible. So I'm changing that to a 2. We're going to let everything reset. And uh, I'll change that to a 58, because why not? Change that to change that to a, fi a 5. That, thank you very much. So that is done. We've got the first stop done. That should bump everything. Nope, it doesn't. We have to bump everything up manually ourselves. So I'm going to change this now to A5. We're going to see if that works. We're going to change this to a... Not a 4, but to a 5. I said a... That's a 6. There's a 5. Okay, we are good on that. So that's changed to a 5. And apparently the other stops are possible, but I do not trust them. So I'm adding another minute to each stop. That now gets an extra one. And I'm going to change... I don't care about that, so I'm going to change this to a... I'm still getting static constant clashes, so we're going to change this to an A. You can already see the ending messages say you completed or failed. And uh, let's close that, and the final stop is now going to be literally that 2059-12. So, 
ignoring the stack constants clash constantly showing up, you can see that I have to edit this scenario to even be able to make the stops on time. Why? Well, there's a random wheel slip penalty that's going to show up in here somewhere. If I can find it now, I don't know where it is. I may have to edit the wheel slip normally, the edit the information normally on that, but let me just find what I'm looking for. Uh, object tools, no. Scenario toolbox, I don't need. Uh, oh, I think I know where I need to go for this. I think if I head over to this general area over here somewhere, uh, there is a scenario in, ah, right here. So I'm not sure which one is the correct one, but if we go to the scenario indicator, we can probably get information. Uh, and I don't want to double click on them because if I double click on them, what's literally going to happen is I'm going to load out of the scenario. Uh, so I might have to actually go and edit the information normally if I find this can't be done. Uh, so yeah, if this can't be done, I'm going to have to go edit the uh, info manually after I put the scenario in place. But what I'm literally going to be doing, I'm, actually I'm going to do that anyway. Uh, what I'm literally going to be doing is copying the scenario over the original one, changing my wheel slip numbers to get rid of the wheel slip because it's impossible. It, it's actually impossible. To drive this train with wheel slip on this timetable uh, even on the high speed line I'm already predicting it's gonna be impossible so I'm gonna get rid of the wheel slip penalties just for convenience I'm gonna show you the scenario as it should be because this scenario is impossible to play on the proper timing and I want to enjoy myself playing this scenario I don't want to go through stress editing this scenario after the fact so we're gonna go ahead and put the edit scenario in place we're gonna go ahead and play that and I'll see you in that scenario in just a moment What terrible weather. Tonight you will be driving the high speed service from Augsburg to Munich. You will only need to stop at pacing. Good luck. And as you can see, I'm already on the move because even with the adjusted timetable I have, we still need all the time we can get. I have left the career scoring mechanics on to show you the uh, career scoring setup, uh, but I have turned the wheel slip off and of course I have my edited timetable. I've left the word edit on the title in the uh, in there just to show you that it is a slightly modified version of the route. But if I bring that back up, you can indeed see now 2032 is my stop as I show you in the editor and everything is moved up after that as displayed. So I've given myself the extra minute for the first stop. We're going to gamble on the possibility that everything is legit after this, but this first stop literally needed the extra minute on it there and you also needed the time to account for wheel slip because there's no way to get this train down to 35 or even 30 kilometers per hour without staying on notch one and if you have to stay on notch one you cannot apply the proper braking you cannot get the proper speed to get to your first stop whoever made this scenario made a big mistake in the calculations for the stops on this scenario and uh, that in my view is an unforgivable sin in career scenario creation because I'm already coming into the station at 40 I have to literally put the brakes on full in order to get this train to a stop and I don't know if I can do it safely so full stop now now because I don't have wheel slip penalties being assessed it looks like either it's not showing up or I just um, actually did it correctly for once which is actually interesting so I'm going to keep the train going a little further because I try to make my stops properly. And now I'm going to bring the train to a full stop right now. Please and thank you. And as you can see, I am already several seconds beyond the 21 or the 20, 31, 38 stop time. So this edit was absolutely necessary to not drive like an idiot. Let's look at the train and we'll get ready for our service. Leaving Augsburg Hunstetterstrasse. So I can't say it. Augsburg Uh We're heading for Augsburg Hochzold. We're not stopping. We're just going via the station. So we're now going to be entering high speed line territory. Let's see how this goes, shall we?
There is a 100 up ahead. There's the uh, service coming on for the LZB. Nearly made me jump out of my skin. They're already starting to uh, tick a few seconds onto our ETAs, which is always fun. So we are going to have some 200, 280s, as you can see up ahead here. I'm already working on a 280 limit. But we have to go through this 100 section first. And I'm bringing the train down speed for that 100. And we are going to be off from there. So we are well on time for the first uh, waypoint here. And this again proves that the waypoint would have been accurate for the other version, the original version of the scenario, if we could stop on time. Because you cannot make the first stop on time in that first scenario. And I've just kind of shown you the most proper way to do it while trying to avoid getting wheel slipped, which also takes away your points. Uh, so by trying to... Uh, by making that first stop late, it would make you late for all your other stops. Therefore, you couldn't have made that stop in the original scenario or that waypoint in the original scenario either. You might not have been as bad, but you still would have been possibly late. Uh, and uh, therefore, the fact that I now had a stop set up on time proves that you can indeed make that on time if you have a proper timetable set up to start. One bad mark on a timetable can screw up your entire scenario. And this is especially bad if this were a standard scenario or a timetable scenario. Because if it was, you would literally be looking at a situation where you would not be able to make the first stop. You would get an X and you would fail the scenario before you even get going. So having the stops all properly set up to be uh, achievable by the player is absolutely critical to any scenario. And not setting them up properly, like in this scenario, uh, proves that this original version of the scenario is not worth doing. So what I would do is I would... If I were uh, you as the player, I would learn how to edit for your scenarios, uh, get those edits in place, and do them as edited. Or if you really don't care about the points, which you shouldn't because they don't mean anything, and I'm just demonstrating how some of them are bad, uh, then you can just turn into a standard scenario using uh, RW tools or something like that, and uh, or TS tools as it's now known, and just go from there. There's always that option as well. So we're going to be going via Ulching. You can see that we are already late for Ulching. This is not a good start, guys. There's a 240 coming up. I'm not even worried about it because I'm not even at 240 yet. But the 100 to 280 knocks a lot of time off of your ETA immediately. You're in immediate trouble. I'm not even going to worry about trying to show you the names of all the stations on this route. We're going to be driving eventually a service that goes through those stations directly. And I didn't put that on the previous video either, obviously, for that reason. So in the future, we will take a look at those stations. For right now, we're going to keep right on going where we are. And we're just going to enjoy the high-speed line. I'll, I'll put that in quotes. Quote, enjoy the high-speed line. train going by. I'm up to 238, approaching 239, so I should kind of just keep my speed in this area. There's a 200 coming up, so I'm going to start slowing down now because I have to get the uh, train down in this bad weather to 200 safely. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and do a small break right now to do that. I'm actually in good shape, so I'm going to take the brakes off for a second. We did get down to 200. The next speed change is already being programmed into our system. There's the next 280 coming up. Entering the 200 kilometer or 280 kilometer section once again, leaving the 200. Can now go ahead and speed up once again. So we are coming up on another speed change already. I have to go down to 200 right away again. So I'm not going to get anywhere close to 280. Again, why is there a 280? <laughs> the track is good for it, but the train service is never able to reach it. Why put that in the timetable? The next speed change is very close. The uh, indicator, the green line that shows up on the bottom every time a speed changes. It didn't go all the way to the top because the 280 is fairly close to where we are. Our timing now shows us potentially late here. We have to go another 15 kilometers in uh, a little less than four minutes. Good luck. <laughs> oh, I almost uh, panicked there for a second. So I have to try to get the speed up to 240 and hopefully stay at 240 for a while. taking a quick peek at the uh, information up ahead you can see the uh, 9900 we have a long way to go at this speed limit so we're going to be able to enjoy this 280 a little bit this should help us make some of that time that we need we have 12 kilometers to go we have less than three minutes to do it so getting above 240 getting above 240 is going to be critical
We have no speed changes noted up ahead on our path at all. Now, can you imagine trying to stop the train with wheel slip in this uh, environment right now? We're making some of the time back. The number has started to decrease, so we are going to keep an eye on a speed change up ahead. Probably down to 200 kilometers per hour, so I'm going to stop increasing speed. I've hit 275. I'm happy with that. Six kilometers means that we are now getting within range that I like. We're getting a beep about a slowdown up ahead, so I'm putting the brakes on very, very carefully here. There's the 200. I think I can get down there in time. So I think there are different tier levels of beep. The first beep is probably the one you want to listen to in these conditions. Uh, a later beep might be good in, in better conditions. And of course, the one that gives you five beeps in a row, if you get that, you're going down to heavy brakes in order to even be down in time. So down to 200 we are. We're coming up to Old King. I'm going to be on time. And we continue via the waypoint at Old King with a warning of some sort there. And there was Old King Station. I was going to get you a camera shot there, but um, yeah, I didn't. <laughs> so we have uh, some kind of speed change up ahead, probably down to a 160. I have a feeling we're going to get slammed down to an 80 as well. That is just my prediction on that. But we're definitely going to be going down to 160 in the next section. We have to be at pacing uh, literally in three minutes. Or five minutes, sorry, in five minutes. But we're set to be there in about three minutes. We might be able to relax this a bit knowing there's an 80 coming up, but because of that 80, I also uh, don't want to risk losing too much speed now in case we really need it. At our current speed, we would be at pacing in three minutes. We're not going at the speed all the way. In fact, not being at 200 right now might actually hurt me, so I'm putting the speed back up. I believe that says about 4,500 on the display now, which means get ready to slow down a little bit. There's the 160 indicated on the speed, on the uh, sign up ahead. And the 80 is going to be very shortly after that, I believe. I don't think we're going to have a lot of time to go 160. So I'm going to take the speed down a little bit just to be safe.
Never mind, that's the 100 up ahead. We're already getting warned about that. So I'm down to 130 already because I'm trying to slow down for that 100 as well. You can see pacing is right there, so I'm definitely going to slow it down now. I need to try to avoid any uh, sudden stops with wheel slip and passenger discomfort here. So I am going to bring the speed down because i got two minutes to go, and the station is within two minutes of my current location. So this should be a doable stop under these circumstances. I did not have the 80, so it looks like the lane change I expected did not happen. I'm not complaining about that. I'm going to take the train down to 80 anyway just to help prepare for the stop. And to avoid any potential surprise. So we have rejoined the line from Garmisch Park and Kirshen, which we can't really see through the rain on the windshield, unfortunately, but trust me, it did come in on the right. So again, this stop looks like it would be possible if we had a proper stop at the first stop marker. I'm also coming in way too fast though, and this is worth noting. I am coming in way too fast. So I have turned off wheel slip penalties, but with the wheel slip on, you, I would be getting penalized here. Nonetheless, we are arriving at Munich pacing. We are now at the minute we have to stop. I think we're going to be okay now for our stopping pattern. In better weather, we would have had a heavier break a little earlier. But uh, this is not better weather. So arrival at Munich Pacing, we should be on time on delay or platform at 9. Leaving Munich Pacing, our next stop is Gile 18, or Platform 18, Terminal Platform at Munich. Munich Hop Bonhof, I think is how it's said, but it's only shown as Munich here. We are hurrying our train up to a speed limit as fast as we can because we need every second where we only have six minutes to work with. And this weather slowing down is almost impossible. So we're going to take advantage of what we can get here. So I'm going to take the train up to 115. I'm going to hit the brakes. Brakes. Now again, this break would not be possible in this weather with wheel slip penalties. But because I have had to edit the wheel slip out, I am taking the chance on this. I'm now down to 90, where I should be. I'm dropping it slightly under because we are on a downhill gradient. But I can't drop it down too much because every second counts in this stop. Notice our ETA currently says 2057 and 57 seconds. We actually are losing time on our ETA despite being at our speed limit. So that tells you right there that this scenario is not properly timed. It is very evident at this point that it's not properly timed. 
And uh, there's nothing we can do about that. So the scenario not being properly timed means you can't get a top score on the scenario under ideal conditions, under the under the proper conditions here. We're now able to go up to 120. I am going to push the speed up quickly. But I am going to have to, again, put a brake on before I really want to because uh, I can't slow down at a fast pace. As unironic as that sounds, slowing down at a fast pace. Even with a uh, sand application, I don't think I can get the uh, brakes down where I want to. Wheel slip is going to be registered in some way on this drive. But we turn off the penalty, so yeah, there you go. Did I forget to mention this is the drive like an idiot portion of the journey? So let's see what kind of braking power we get as we come to the, what is actually a 40 speed limit. I've been here before, I know this. So I'm putting stronger brakes on. I'm holding the sand button just in case it helps, but I know that the wheel slip still tries to show up with the sand button down. And notice even with the 61% brake, that brake is not taking an application here. It is not happening. The train is just saying, no, you pushed me too hard, dude. There is the indication we have a 40 coming up. We are in trouble. Now the brakes are working. They are now released as we got down to 40.4 and we had about uh, five, six, seven hundredths of a kilometer to go at that point. So that is going to bring us within two minutes of our stop. You can see the stop is up ahead. I have to run this to the very last second. And even though I'm going to stop this train wherever I can, the platform to make the stop, it's worth noting that early on the platform, and this is carried over from the garbage part incursion route as well. Very early in the platform is this area where the doors do not open. We're going to probably have to go about halfway along the platform before any doors will open. So we have to consider uh, that even trying to hack this, if you will, to make it um, possible, uh, we're still going to have these weird problems with doors not opening on station platforms and so on and so forth. We now have one minute to make our stop, slightly over that. And uh, we have a 30 kilometer per hour section straight ahead of us. Uh, at our current speed, going at 30 kilometers per hour into the station would be possible if we don't go the entire way. So the odds are very likely we are going to be late on this final stop. And there's not really anything I can do about that. There really isn't. There's absolutely nothing I can do. Uh, if I should have put another minute on the stop. I my The little voice in my head was telling me, put another minute on this stop. You need it. I didn't do it. So I'm now down to 30. I have to enter the platform as is. And we're going to see how far I can get along the platform before I have to bring the train to a stop for its arrival. To process passengers. I'm going to go ahead and apply the stop now. Hope that I am far enough. I'm going to put a heavier brake on now. Hope that I am far enough. Get this thing stopped, please. I'm late. I'm 100% late. But we're going to go ahead and see how the... I can't open the doors. I literally cannot open the doors right now. So you see, this is a problem when I'm fully in the platform and I still cannot open the doors. So this is one of those scenarios that you cannot do on time. I think I've proven to you, 
even as a stair is stary, you cannot do this on time. So I'm going to go ahead and open the doors here. And we're going to just go ahead and uh, accept our fate. And I'm going to hack that in later because that's not fair. But in any case, let's look at the uh, train as we finish. So even on an edited version of the scenario, it is impossible to make this stops on time. I edited the wheel slip penalty so we can actually do the wheels, the wheel, the braking we need to do in the rain. I've edited the um, timetable itself so we can actually get to some stops on time, the first one especially, but we couldn't do it. Uh, so it's going to say we've completed all the tasks correctly, but odds are we're not gonna have a perfect score because this scenario is designed to not give you a perfect score. And uh, that is horrible stereo design, something I will routinely call out every time I see it. Because uh, the only other option is to drive like an idiot. And uh, if you drive like an idiot, you speed. Like, you speed through uh, new speed zones and things like that. So, yeah. Let's just go to the scoring screen. Let's see how late we were for this. Because this station platform is bugged to all hell. Let's see what happens. So see what I mean, guys? Uh, apparently, we had a few extra seconds to work with over the end of the scenario time, but because of the exact location I stopped, I was not able to make the uh, stop on time. And that is, I don't know how not Silent got a thousand on this scenario legally. It's impossible to get a thousand on this scenario legally. I don't see how he could have done that. Um, I've just shown why that's not possible. Uh, based on the stop times I was able to get back at the start of the route. And uh, the fact that I stopped on the platform at the end of this scenario and still couldn't get it. So I'm going to, because of that, I'm going to have to basically hack that in if I want that. Again, not a big deal. The points don't mean anything. But, uh, you know, there are all sorts of people who have obviously hacked that in. Uh, look at deleted there. That is a fun one. Deleted. Uh, so yeah, I guarantee you not every 1,000 point score on this scenario is legit. They simply are not. And uh, that is all I can say about that. It's not possible in my opinion. Maybe back in 2015 it was. Maybe the wheel slip mechanics changed after the scenario was released. But right now it is not possible. That is my analysis of this scenario even on an edited form of the scenario. And once those two things got changed, it made the scenario not work properly on a timetable's perspective. So, um, yeah. I'm going to recommend do not play Storming into Munich. It is a waste of time. Uh, in any case, that is all for me today. I'm going to try to do something a little more casual next time, and I was planning to put out a third video this week. I think I'm just going to go ahead and relax after this one, because this one just knocked me into a sense of uh, hatred and... Uh, well, not hatred, but... Um, a sense of, I don't want to say lack of confidence or anything like that either, because I'm sure that's not true as well. It just, I'm just a little disappointed, is probably the word I should use, uh, that this got changed, that this, the scenario, which apparently did work properly before, has since become impossible. And Norfolk Southern Coal District has the same thing. We'll get there one day and I'll show you one of those scenarios. I may not even bother editing that one. I may just show you that one as is. Uh, but one of those scenarios used to be possible with 1,000 point score. I know it was because I've seen the video for it. And when I tried to run it, oh no, you're getting wheel slip at half speed up this hill. Uh, the mechanics of the game have changed so much since uh, Nor Norfolk Southern Coal District, Munich to Augsburg, and that came out. Such that the routes later on, like 2017, 2018, Generally, those scenarios onwards are possible. Maybe even 2016 is possible still. Uh, but So anything new since 2016 or 2017 has generally been possible. Anything before that is a coin flip. Uh, there's no guarantee that scenarios then are possible. And that's, while I want to explore all the old routes, this is also the reason I don't plan to show off all of the scenarios on all of the routes. Because they just are impossible in some cases to do. And if I find that's the case... I will just stop playing that scenario. I'm not even going to show you that scenario. I may tell you about it, but I'm probably not going to show you that scenario. Uh, unless I put an edited form in and play that. So with that said, have a wonderful day, evening, and night. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you do subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this with me complaining or otherwise completing scenarios. And I will see you next time. I'm Cyclone. If I do put out another video, uh, I will, it would be a Wednesday video, but 
The scenario I'm looking at is also a long one, and I have things I need to do before I leave for the week. So I will probably put out more scenarios while I am away and uh, get those set up and recorded in that environment instead. And that will give me a chance to get caught back up again so I have more stuff for you going forward. Uh, but in the meantime, I might just need to relax and do what I need to do here today. And if so, there will be no video tomorrow. But I will see what happens. Maybe there will be a video tomorrow to make up for the Saturday one missing. I haven't decided yet. I was busy all day Saturday too. It's been a crazy weekend. Cut me some slack here. I'll see you for my next video. I'm Cyclone. Bye-bye.